But when these guys are saying that the guy died by strangulation, there's all these points of consistent strangulation, and it takes forever to get these pictures, and then there's the video cameras didn't work. And this is the second time he tried to himself. And he's a high-profile witness in a really, really, really important case involving the highest levels of government yeah I wouldn't I would think that that's the kind of guy you whack so uh, up top we have to uh, talk about a little bit of YouTube business uh, I've heard that you can't talk about Jeffrey Epstein is it true sir that um, you have what's been described as an egg-shaped penis that you can't talk about that guy named Jeff without YouTube yeah. suppressing you from the algorithm. So we should just say Jeff. So we, sh we have to just say Jeff. Um, we also can't talk about, according to YouTube, and this isn't a conspiracy, this is just advertiser friendliness issues, okay? okay. Don't get excited. Um, but we also can't talk about what he may or may not have done in his jail cell. That activity, mm. I've heard other YouTubers refer to as unaliving. Right. So we have to, I think we should stick with that. Okay. So it's probably going to be a lot of cuts. Jeffrey Epps had attempted to his <laughs> Jeff was discovered by guards on their rounds, uh, dead in his... Yeah, no, dead is fine. <laughs> so you and I had a little bet going. We did. Uh, what was the bet? It was kind of a Deadpool. We were betting. Betting on the life, basically, of Ghislaine Maxwell. You had theorized. So how long she would last. You, you're one of these people that likes to say that fella Jeff didn't unalive, unalive himself. That meme, you were very into it. And I was kind of making fun of that idea, saying like, well, if that were true, Ghislaine seems to be healthy and well. And surely since she has access to all of the secrets and information and dirt on people in high places that Jeffy does, surely that same thing will happen to her, right? Because it's, a, I mean, it makes sense, right? Yeah, I, I thought it was only a matter of time. It was only a matter of time. Um, so she's uh, been convicted. I uh, I won that bet pretty soundly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so I have to take you out to dinner. <laughs> yeah. Get my news only from memes. Okay. So, right, and that's, you're right as an American. Okay, so what do you think? I know that you that you feel like you can't say <laughs> <laughs> Andrew's, Andrew thinks that our lives are, <laughs> no, are at stake. Can you just summarize like what other people, not you necessarily, but there what has other been, people? Uh, few things, a uh, few things. Uh, <laughs> you don't remember what about they were. the circumstances, the circumstances. and the, the, the guards and the, guards. the videotapes. The and videotapes. The, yeah, and the, the fractured bones and the bone fractures. Okay. That's all I need you for. Okay. You're dismissed. You're also very unwilling to talk about this, so I think it's best you leave. I appreciate it. This is only for brave people. At 6.30 a.m. on August 10th, 2019, our friend Jeff was discovered dead in his jail cell. Uh, he was unalived by an apparent it's a rope-related incident. Oh, yeah, that's good. Okay. <laughs> According to prison authorities, he had attempted unaliving uh, a month previously, uh, on July 23rd, 2019. Uh, he would later say, Jeff, uh, would later say that his cellmate had attacked him. Later, the cellmate, a former police officer named Nick Tartaglioni, wanted that footage to show that he had actually tried to save Jeff uh, from his attempt. NCC authorities then said that they inadvertently preserved video surveillance from the wrong floor of the prison. After this first unaliving attempt, uh, Jeff reportedly told a psychologist that he had, quote unquote, a wonderful life and had no interest in unaliving himself and that he was a coward uh, and did not like pain. After this interview with a psychologist, he was removed from unaliving monitoring. Or, and 11 days later, he was found dead. Time that he was found dead, he was supposed to have had a cellmate. That was the one thing in place that was supposed to, uh, the one provision that they were keeping instead of putting him on unaliving watch. The cellmate had been released the night previously. 
So guards were supposed to have checked on him every 30 minutes. Later, surveillance of the guards showed that they were shopping online and snoozing uh, during the time that they were supposed to be checking on Jeff. But later, they went and had to face their own criminal charges because of this negligence. But before you get too judgy, uh, that MCC, Metropolitan Correctional Center, is uh, has faced a ton of understaffing issues that we'll get into. It's not a great facility, uh, and they have been, and there's, and there's evidence to suggest that they were pretty overworked, so just keep that in mind. There was supposed to be surveillance of Jeff's cell, uh, but the Washington Post later reported that that video footage was unusable. There's a lot to suggest that the Metropolitan Correctional Center wasn't all that it should have been. There was a report in the New York Times that uh, an intake screening form for Jeff uh, described him as a black male and indicated that he had no prior sex uh, offense convictions, even though he was a registered sex offender. A few social phone calls he made were not recorded, logged, or monitored. NCC has actually since been shut down because of all the systemic issues, uh, its crumbling infrastructure, uh, poor living situations for inmates. In March 2020, uh, NPR reported that just before the pandemic, the jail went on a week-long uh, lockdown uh, after officials got a tip that a gun might have been smuggled into the, into the prison. Uh, investigators eventually found it, but I mean, they got a whole gun inside. I think in any other context, if you heard that this prison is, uh, seems to be kind of incompetently run and has some ongoing issues, it's not that hard to believe that they would run into these issues of not having the video surveillance how it should be and maybe not having guards as on the ball as they ought to be. But because of who Jeff is, that's just not, uh, not likely. There's the uh, Occam's razor, uh, which says that the, uh, the most likely explanation is probably the simplest one. But then there's also Hanlon's razor, which says that you shouldn't assume malice in a situation where stupidity would be a sufficient explanation. And I think both of those are important to keep in mind when you look at this particular conspiracy. The first place where I saw a lot of the uh, Jeff conspiracy theories get going was on the Joe Rogan podcast. We have to understand, this is really important. <laughs> Here's the, uh... we're, uh, we're doing a podcast. When you're doing a podcast, you don't have to be factually accurate. You just have to talk shit. And hopefully <laughs> if you fuck up, you correct it and it's funny. Where they had someone who was putting forth the uh, theories of one forensic pathologist named Michael Baden. It's Dr. Michael Baden, that's that yeah. guy from the HBO autopsy show. Uh, it drives me crazy when people talk about Michael Baden or Baden, I'm not sure which. I'm joined today by my very special guest, he's also a Fox News contributor, my husband, Dr. Michael Baden. Hi, honey. Uh, but when people talk about him, they leave out the essential context that he is a man who has made a profession out of uh, having contrary opinions that are very much unlike what everyone else in his field is saying. Uh, he's a, a professional dissenter, if you will. He provided expert witness testimony at Phil Spector's trial uh, where he said that what made the most sense is not that Phil Spector shot his wife, Oh no, what makes more sense is that sh she shot herself and then her blood got on his coat, on Phil Spector's coat, because she was expirating after having been shot in the throat. Because everyone shoots themselves in the neck. That's what makes the most sense. Uh, so that was his testimony. Um, don't worry, Phil Spector didn't get away with it. Michael Baden also testified at the O.J. Simpson trial. He offered a theory of the evidence that suggested that the crime had taken, uh, had taken place over a much longer period than the prosecution was saying, which was important for O.J. Simpson because he had an alibi at the time uh, that the murder was actually taking place. <laughs> Old Dr. Mike uh, took it all back and he disavowed. 
This is not the first time that Dr. Michael Baden's ethics had been called into question. Uh, in 1982, he was fired from his position as deputy medical examiner in Suffolk County on Long Island after he gave an interview with We Magazine in which he uh, explained the easiest way to kill someone. He's giving professional murder advice, basically. So I think that that's all really important to keep in mind when you hear what he had to say about uh, Jeff's circumstances, the condition of Jeff's body when he was discovered. He was hired in this case by Mark Ep by Mark Jeff's brother. So with all that ringing in our ears, let's talk about the Joe Rogan episode. They uh, make a big deal out of the fact that in Jeff's neck, the hyoid bone, hyoid hyoid bone was broken. Uh, which Dr. Baden says is more consistent with strangulation than with hanging. And then he said in other interviews, oh, in all my time as an examiner, I've never seen a hyoid bone broken. It's, uh, it's never like that. It's always, uh, that's always more consistent with a murder than with an unaliving. Um, here's the thing, that's totally not true. I looked it up and you can find studies, there's statistics about how that works and how people usually, how people's bodies usually look in that situation. And while it's more rare to have a, a hyoid bone broken uh, in a hanging, it's not at all something that never happens. And I also saw a study that said that it's more likely to happen when you're older. Uh, Jeff was 66 at the time of his death. There are so many things that this doctor, no, he is a real doctor, I shouldn't use scare quotes, but there's so many things that he says that are just uh, patently untrue. Like, it's, it's wild. I also wanted to get into the fact that in the Joe Rogan episode, I don't remember if this was something that Dr. Michael Baden brought up, but this is something that the fellas of Joe Rogan thought was important. Um, the idea that Jeff was over six feet tall and uh, his prison cell not that, you know, didn't have a lot of height. They don't offer you high ceilings, even if, you know, you are a, a rich, rich man. I guess. There is a there is a little, like, spot way up here on the top of the uh, grate where the window is, where you could see maybe there was something up there. But the thing to remind, remember here is that he was uh, about six foot tall, 185 pounds. The idea there is that he couldn't have hanged himself because everyone knows to hang yourself, you need enough space to drop. But what they, I guess, don't know is, and then again, this is something where it's like, oh, we all just decided that tall people can't hang themselves in prison. Hanging is by far the most common method of unaliving in prison. There's something called a short drop hanging, where basically you fashion a noose and then instead of dropping off of something, you just sit down. And there's a way that you can set it up where uh, you're asphyxiated because of the position that you're in. Uh, uh, unpleasant, um, I know, but the fact is it happens all the time. Um, I'm not a science expert. In general, we're just not that interested in what happens to prison inmates because they're not, by and large, sympathetic characters. But what happened to Jeff, if you look at the prison experience as a whole, really is not that unusual. It really doesn't stand out as being all that extraordinary. The fact that the video surveillance didn't work, the fact that the guards didn't do what they were supposed to, and the fact that probably more attention should have been paid to his mental state uh, before what happened happened. Uh, it just didn't happen the way it was supposed to. And instead of focusing all of our energy and coming up with this delightful conspiracy theory, I think what we should say is like, what does this tell us about how prisons are, are run? But that's not as interesting, is it? As a literally, you're a professional skeptic, <laughs> and, and you looked at some of the evidence. You're like, oh, well, you know what? This might be a conspiracy, <laughs> yeah. you know. And when yeah, I said when Michael Shermer thinks it might be a conspiracy, it's probably a goddamn conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> There's been enough of them. I'm still not sure about that one because after I posted something about the you know the two cameras broke or whatever, somebody mm -hmm. wrote me from that prison saying all oh, those cameras are always breaking. Like, oh, all it's right. A
The other idea that I keep hearing with Jeff, and then also more recently, this came up a lot with Brian Laundrie in the Gabby Petito case, people love to say, narcissists don't unalive themselves. It's something I see on the internet so much. It's just something that people have decided is true. I guess the idea is that narcissists wouldn't do that because they, uh, their lives revolve around power and control and admiration of people around them, and they wouldn't have that if they were not alive. A study published in the Journal of Clinical Psychiatry uh, suggested that out of all of the attempters diagnosed with a narcissistic personality disorder, this was in a study of 446 attempters, that people who were diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder were less impulsive, but that their attempts at unaliving themselves corresponded to higher lethality. In other words, they were generally more successful. So why do people think that Jeff was murdered as opposed to unalived? I'm gonna sum this up as quickly as I can, and I think that this is just the most popular conspiracy theory. I know that there are other theories out there, but this is the one that I see most often. So supposedly, Jeff was working with Israeli intelligence to uh, gather blackmail fodder for important, high-ranking, powerful people, where he would, uh, supposedly, the idea is he would lure them in, lure these powerful people in with promise of sex with minors, which we all know is not sex, it's rape. Can I say rape? And then he would supposedly record this activity and then have this over them. Like, you do what we want or we'll let everybody know like, what a pervert you are. So how did Jeff get involved with Israeli intelligence? So supposedly that was through uh, Robert Maxwell, Ghislaine Maxwell's dad, who Jeff actually knew before he and Ghislaine started dating. Uh, Robert Maxwell uh, was a media tycoon. A lot of his ties to the Israel intelligence agencies, I believe those rumors come from an Israeli lobbyist slash arms dealer named Ari Ben Menashe, who is a shady character in and of himself, and I'm not sure that we should just take his word for it. Uh, but it's worth noting that Robert Maxwell also died under very suspicious circumstances. Uh, he was on his yacht uh, off the Canary Islands near Spain, and he fell off his yacht, which is called the Lady Ghislaine. Uh, later, Spanish authorities said that he died of natural causes, maybe a heart attack. And of course, the conspiracy there is that he was actually lured out on uh, to the edge of his yacht at night by these Israeli Mossad. They uh, made it look as though uh, he had just gone for a little swim. He was buried at the Mount of Olives, which is a cemetery in Israel that's reserved for Israeli statesmen. So that is all very odd. And it wouldn't surprise me if there was some element of a conspiracy that was true in there. Like that all is obviously very suspicious. Robert Maxwell was also facing financial ruin. Uh, he had been robbing his employees' pension plans for many years, and that was about to come to light. That could also be, you know, a pretty strong motivator for maybe not having the strongest commitment to being alive. Uh, now, it is weird that that was Robert Maxwell, that's Ghislaine Maxwell's dad, and then Jeff, her ex. Um, but I will say this. Is Ghislaine Maxwell the first gal to uh, date a man who was the same kind of asshole as her dad? No, she is not. I know that there's another conspiracy theory that Hillary Clinton was somehow involved. Is the idea that she had to have Jeff whacked because if she didn't, there was a chance that people would find out that Bill Clinton was a pervert? And if you got a guy with a voracious sexual appetite, I mean, there's a few of those fellas out there. And you know, hey, man. You're very I'm proud out, of that, aren't you? I'm out of <laughs> office now. I'm just fucking hanging out, having a good time with Jeffrey. I don't think, I don't think, I don't think that that's a secret worth going out of your way to hide. So that's one I didn't really look that far into, to be honest, because I think it's stupid.
you just heard me say all that. Mm -hmm. What did you think? What's your reaction? I've heard it. You knew all that stuff about Dr. Michael Baden? No. Okay. So you heard me go on and on. Uh, what what did you what did you think of my take? Very interesting. <laughs> I I didn't know about the neck breaking doctor exaggerating the rarity of the uh, such thing. such an exaggeration. Did you know that that prison was so awful and that it was known for being awful and it was uh, systemically awful? Yeah. Well, it's convenient to put a high risk. Uh, a candidate for not being alive into a place See, that is okay. quite dangerous, I which knew... is an old prison. I'll give you half a point. It was just so obnoxious to me, like how it was just such a fun meme, and just people will always prefer the fun meme to like, well, let's do even the barest bit of research into whether or not this is actually plausible. Memes are faster. Memes are faster. We should delete all this and just make a meme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be fast. Yeah. See you in meme town. Mm. According to the police department's probable cause affidavit, uh, one witness described your penis as oval shaped and claimed when erect it was thick towards the bottom but was thin and small towards the head portion and called it egg shaped. Those are not my words, I apologize. 